Without further ado, let me welcome you. Please, can we appreciate the rhyme that I just made there? Anyway, without further ado, <laughs> I present to you. Jeez. Hello. People, welcome back to another Jason Talk. I am always glad to have you back here on Wednesday on Twitch to have conversation about important topics, very important topics that are actually useful for you. If you don't know Jason, it means that you didn't see the other videos that we made together. Jason is the CEO of RAD and he's also a biopsychologist. talking about being a morning person is it actually necessary to be successful or can we also i don't know have different kind of schedules as my very first question jason i would like to ask you does being a morning person or a night person a real concept like does it actually exist is there such thing as a morning person a night person there definitely is we have started to see that actually genetically that there are morning and night people and one of the increasingly amazing developments in this is we can even start to blood test for people being morning or night people it's really really uh, important too because the ability for somebody to be productive to really do good work is going to be dependent on that it takes a ton of time to switch around our natural schedule and force ourselves to be a morning person or a night person. And sometimes it, it just doesn't really work out for the best. We've been seeing lots and lots of research now, you know, even suggesting that schools should start later on in the day and kind of build a compromise between morning and night people because for the non-morning students who go to school, they perform significantly lower than their morning focused peers. So you can also take uh, some blood tests, like some DNA tests to check if you are a morning or an evening person. Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask you, yeah. like, this is very, very fascinating. Like what is it analyzed in the DNA in order to see if we are a morning person or not? Yeah, we do have genetic markers that we can look at that show us who is a, a morning or night person. How we become a morning or night person is a little bit more uncertain. I mean, we have different theories of how somebody becomes a morning or night person. We know that somebody's circadian rhythm and how that develops, which can you know certainly control when we're feeling tired, when we're feeling awake. You know, we we can see that that might um, you know have some some level of influence uh, how it's being impacted but even you know if we look at this from an evolutionary standpoint we have kind of come from all over the world moved a lot over the entire span of humanity and some of us have ended up in places that have longer nights some of us have ended up in places where the difference between morning and night is less clear less availability with sun there's just so many different things that could possibly be at play there but at the end of the day what we see is that yeah absolutely forcing somebody to wake up earlier than they need to um, or than their body is available to will just put them at a loss for a lot of the day. It's been interesting to see, though, some of, of the ways that people have been working around that, though. Like, um, like a good tip is to just go outside as soon as you can and to start to experience sun and you know, naturally prompt the body to wake up. The body starts to absorb some of that sun and feels prompted to wake up and, and keep keep itself moving along in that in that system. Even getting these really interesting lights, they're like these natural wake lights, as they call them, that try and simulate night and day. So when you're falling asleep, they dim in a certain way, and when you're waking up, they you know brighten in a certain way. In trying to really modify our body, trick our body into thinking it's it's a different time than it might actually be. Um, but you know, probably even easier than that is to just people wake up when they naturally wake up and let people fall asleep when they naturally fall asleep. If I am 
naturally by DNA, a evening night person. Can I become a morning person? You can, yeah. Uh, I mean, it definitely takes a lot of effort and humans are pretty resilient, pretty adaptable. So it, it is very much possible to change your routine, shift your routine around and get your body more comfortable waking up in the morning. Um, one of the challenges with that, though, is if you are not really a morning person, you'll notice it's really easy to ruin your sleep schedule. That can be hard to tell the difference between stress ruining a sleep schedule and our body just wanting to go back to a certain state. But some of the best ways to actually test this is to see what your weekends are like. And uh, you'll notice, especially as you get older, that sleep and how you sleep, you feel significantly more. If you sleep too much, you might start to have headaches or wake up with a headache. You feel really dehydrated. If you sleep too little, yeah, you're just tilted the entire day. Um, it's like, all right, well, let's go next. But I, I love to use weekends as a really good place to start to figure out what our sleep schedule is like. Seeing when you naturally wake up and letting that kind of be a good guide as to what your sleep schedule could be. So is there like a possibility if we are an evening person to eventually love to be a morning person? Yeah, I mean, you can start to become a morning person from an evolutionary standpoint, from humans just being very resilient and adaptable. You know, your body is going to do what you need it to do. Why we're a morning or night person is entirely based on success and survival and reproduction. So, you know, if, if being a night person was valuable in previous generations, the assumption by default is that it's going to be valuable for you. But if you start to find value in a different way and you, you know, you're really training the body to focus more on being morning focused, it, it will do that. It will definitely adapt to that. You know, we're, we're really trying to solve problems genetically they become big problems this, this is almost how so if you're telling your body that it's actually a problem if we don't wake up early in the morning your body will get the point over time and shift to that this is beautiful to hear because it means that we have hope of uh, changing and actually not hating it i think that the natural question right after is is it better to be a morning person or is it better to be a evening person is there any difference or it doesn't matter um that's a good question I think that question hinges on a couple of things, though. Relatively, it, it shouldn't matter, but functionally, societally, it does matter. We seem to value morning people more than we seem to value night people in society. I think part of this is because, you know, maybe there were a couple of morning people that were really successful and started to lead society, and then a lot of night people who aren't really aware that it's, it's just a matter of they're not morning people see it more as disciplined so morning people are super disciplined to them and so you know aspiring to be a morning person to be more disciplined makes a lot of sense but it's really just these are the people that have kind of led for whatever reason and now we're kind of stuck with that there are plenty of people who thrive very very well as night people whether you know they've created their own job or freelance or They've just decided to work for a company in a different country that matches up better with what their schedule is. There's so many different ways to really modify that to fit better into what we need, what we want. But I don't think there's objectively inherently good or bad. But there is a lot to value in the discipline of it that, um, you know, somebody can, you know, really be disciplined about their sleep schedule. Somebody wakes up consistently at the same time, goes to bed consistently at the same time. The reason that those tend to be morning people is because it is a little bit more convenient for their discipline to align with what society values. So somebody who wakes up at noon every day consistently Nobody's praising that person for consistently waking up at noon. It's like, get up already. Even though, you know, they go to sleep at two or three in the morning and they work pretty hard throughout the day. So that's kind of the societal way that shifts, you know, what is good or what is bad, which one's better, which one's worse, but kind of all the same. There are like a lot of books that kind of push the idea that being a morning person is more productive. We're surrounded by the constant image that you, in order to be successful, you should wake up at 4am in the morning, take a cold shower, work out, 
do yoga, eat 300 grams of uh, fruit, and then clean the entire house. And then by the time that it's 7 a.m., you get to work. Like, is it is it something that it's like actually real? Like, you cannot be successful if you don't have this kind of morning routines? Or can we actually have a, a better, like, can we have a more um, balanced morning routine that doesn't rush us? into the day the underlying theme is is still discipline there is a disciplined approach to starting the day that can begin at any point 4 a.m 7 a.m noon you know you'd still be doing all of these things before you start work so you know the time becomes a bit more relative there but the idea that we're kind of like pushing ourselves early in the morning to accomplish so much to get off to a good start that is a complicated piece as well you know we're we're trying to accomplish simple tasks and we're trying to build momentum in accomplishing those tasks so we're waking up we make the bed successfully we go outside and get some sun successfully we go to the gym and we work out successfully. We're, we're starting to build momentum. We're also starting to build routine. These are all things that, you know, you don't necessarily get excited about doing. Some some people do, but that that is a powerful thing. Somebody who begins their day by successfully accomplishing things that don't wow them, but they know they need to do is going to go into the workplace and be able to do the same thing. Yeah, I'm not excited about doing all of this networking, but I'm going to do it and get it done. This isn't what is the most fun part of my day, but I do that equally as much as I do the fun. So, you know, usually when we're studying even like the routines of various leaders, what we're studying is a series of somebody who is very disciplined in their work, somebody who's very disciplined and routine in their life. And they have a pattern of success that begins at the very start of their day. How does a productive wake up routine looks like? What are the things that must be in our waking up routine? Waking up naturally is really important. You should be able to wake up naturally at around the same time, give or take 10, 15 minutes every day, weekday, weekend, get yourself hydrated as soon as you can. Having water next to your bed is really, is a really good start. And then you want to stretch, get the body prompted to move. If you can go outside and stretch even better, just start moving, getting the body going. Once you, you get the body moving, if you are a person that eats breakfast, sure, go for it. If you intermittent fast, then great, even better. What we've started to see is that intermittent fasting is really, really powerful for us. Our brain has a, a natural hunting instinct to it. And when we have not eaten in the morning, our brain is really particularly focused. It is in hunt mode. It is in predator mode. And so when you're working, you'll have an elevated level of cognitive function, and then you can sustain that for a little bit longer before you need to eat. You want to try and add things that you can be successful with at the beginning of your day and get those out of the way. I had done this thing for a blog that I'm working on where I was studying the routines of various leaders and what they do, what their day, day to day is like, their daily scheduling. And, you know, one of the, the things that was really important in this of, of all of these leaders is that they had a point in their morning schedule where they were able to reflect and just think. All of these different leaders that I was looking at had some point where they were focused in the morning on just reflecting and thinking about what they wanted to accomplish. That is a huge thing to begin the day with as well. So to summarize, hydrate, working out, or like a movie, considering also the last talk that we had about motivation, little tasks that we can chain together that will make us happy about new habits, and uh, and then reflect, like get, having some time to reflect or even think. Someone was actually asking in chat, most of us, as soon as we wake up, first thing, reach for the phone. How bad is this thing for us? Um, not very good. It is not dooming, but you know, it, it does say something about our current stress levels when our first concern waking up is to see 
see what we've missed. That is not a good mindset to have. Usually this is very reflective of stress. So typically, you know, when we wake up in the morning, there is a lot of things that we can do before reaching for the phone. Is it normal that one ha the one, one person has phases where they are a morning person and the next week they become an evening person and can't get anything done in the morning? Um, no. Uh, so that could be stress related could be anxiety related, could be depression related. There, there's a lot of things to take a look at there. The body and the brain want routine. That's what they lean towards. When that is inconsistent, that is usually a, a sign that something is breaking us out of that. It is an uncomfortable one, but definitely the case that we want to explore why that that is happening. Sometimes we, we wake up and what we realize is we have a series of things that are really stressful and overwhelming and we're already really stressed and overwhelmed and the body is just like, no, I'm done. Let's go back to bed. I, <laughs> well, we're just not doing this today. And you have a week that is like that. And the next week you're like, no, I can do this. I'm determined. I'm going to break out of this. And you go through that, you break out of some of these things and the body starts to wear down because it takes a lot of energy to do that and then the next week it's like recovery mode again that usually means we're maybe struggling with burnout or we have some kind of healthy adverse relationship with stress that we need to work on and again thank you so so much jason for being here today oh, thank you it's my pleasure take care everybody bye bye fortunately we understood from this call that is not that important if you're not a morning person as long as you create a routine for yourself. To do a little recap on what Jason said. So our morning routines should include, first of all, get hydrated. You spend the entire night without drinking anything. Getting a glass of water in the morning should be one of the priorities. Second, it's important to add to the morning routine something that is very simple, very easy to achieve. So this will give us a sense of accomplishment that we will keep on the entire day. The small task can be as simple as making your bed. Third point is to get your body moving. Finally, we should also find some time to reflect. Not many scheduled time to actually reflect on the day or the week or the month. It's important to have a moment in the morning where we actually go through it. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you would like any other content like this, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any other question that you would like me to ask to Jason, please let me know in the comments.